getting ready to make a spice rack for my wife for Christmas. It's going to be a special one. So far I've got these boards cut out. That one and this one. And I've got these pecan boards cut out. Now I don't even know how I'm going to do this. I'm kind of winging it really bad. I'm doing it as I go. I drew this out which ain't much to go by but it's going to be something like that. And these little pockets here if I make them pockets on there will be to put utensils in. And this board up here is going to be this pecan board. And I'm going to leave the bark on both sides or at least this is my plan right now. And if there's enough room right up here, Tracy's kitchen. Uh, other than that, I was going to use all pecan, these slabs of pecan I ripped, but I need three inches, and because these are so curved, I can't get a straight three inches out of them. So I think I'm just going to take the bark off of them and put on to these. And it'll be a bark, uh, spice rack with bark on all the edges, if that's how I do it. Like I said, right now I'm winging it. That's just my plan. There's my Christmas. Got me that router from Harbor Freight. Pretty nice little router, I reckon. And these... Those are to build picture frames with. Those are what clamps them together. It's a pulley, four corner clamp system. And I got a new square. One of them kind. That's the spice rack I'm building for my wife. I'm going to fill these side walls up with wood chips like these, or wood slats. And I got bark on it, on all the edges. Up there it says Trace's Kitchen. I'm going to varnish all that. Gun stock red. Or staining, I mean. That won't be real good like that on a video. <laughs> it's right up under that fluorescent light, so it's not letting you see the Tracy's kitchen unless I get right up on it. That's engraved and painted. I think it's going to look really, really nice, I think. Alright, that's about it for now. We'll catch y'all later. Hey folks. I'm still working on my wife's spice rack here. This is a lot of hard work <clears throat> with the Dremel, which makes hard work easier, but now my Dremel has died. It don't do nothing. It does if you... Let me see if I can lay it down here. If you spin this, here at kitchen. I don't know what would cause that. And I've already played with the, I think you call them the bushings, on there and the other side. And nothing to no avail. I hate that too. This bit of good Dremel. I've got lots of use out of it for about four or five years now. Maybe only three years. I don't know. I think I bought it when we came here the first year. So that would make it about almost four years old. But i show you that so I can show you how I'm improvising here a little bit. This is my drill. So I need this sander thing right here really bad, you know, and it's a whole lot easier and more control with the Dremel. 
but I put it on the drill and I can still do the same thing like you can see where I sand up here up here is where there would be spaces between the bark and the wood and I put glue and the same color sawdust or the same sawdust from this wood in the cracks and here you see the unsanded version zoom in on it here I hadn't sanded none of this this side yet and I kind of had a different plan here on what I'm going to do I think um I, you see these little wood chips here that I slice off of um cut off of limbs I'm going to do this whole wall like that which I'd already planned but now I think I'm going to do the inside too maybe um Maybe not the bottom part, like where the spice will sit, but the back and the inside walls. I think I'll do with them wood chips. Shoot, I might even do the whole shelves like that with it too. I just like the I like the way those wood chip things look. They look cool to me. So I think I'm gonna do that. But man. You see something this little and think you can knock it out, you know, in no time. But this thing takes a whole lot of time. You got the first rip in the wood. And see, I ripped the wood out of these old rotten beams up here. I rip them out and get them. These are all ripped. Too. So you rip out the wood to the size you need. Then along, you have to do all the measuring, and I'm not a very good measurer, so there's usually mistakes. Then you got to measure out these dowels, which I had to, wet, or I went and bought these dowels. I don't guess I had to, but to keep them perfectly round and straight, I bought them. They don't cost much, 97 cents for a long one. Then you go cut down limbs. Like that's part of the limbs down there. And let's see. Let's see. See how this limb is? See the bark on it? Then I hold it and run it through the saw and try to stay right on the edge of this little, I forget what you call it, cambium or whatever. Stay right on the edge of that. And you got to have it measured out to the thickness of your wood. And then you glue it on. And then like gluing on on these curves, that's hard because the wood wants to break or the bark because it don't want to bend. So I heat it up with the blow dryer to help it bend a little bit. And then bend it, glue it, nail it. And you do that on every edge. And then the engraving's pretty hard. I just want to show people so you don't look at this and think oh yeah that could be something that's knocked out in an hour it's taking a lot longer and then as far as drying I mean like this contact cement that I put all over this stuff to preserve the bark and the chips it takes a long time to dry like in this weather about a day and a half two days then when I start putting the stain on it's going to take a day or two to dry and then the polyurethane but it'll be well worth it. You know, once it's done, you stand back and you look at it and you think, man, that's nice. You know, this fits our house. Our house is all country. It's built in 1920. And we try to keep the country setting, you know, the hardwood floors and country-ish everything. So this will fit right in with the country setting. And I believe this is a one of a kind. I don't, I've never seen a spice rack with bark on it before or with the wood chips. So I think this will be a one of a kind so far until I make another one my friend Michael Littleton might want one like this but anyway that's that um, update on my wife's spice rack hadn't been working on it for a while because I've been needing a Dremel and um, Jason Fisherholic sent me this Dremel and it works perfect so my other Dremel is just all the way dead I ordered the new bushes or brushes for it, put them in, and it still did nothing, so that, that one's dead. I'm going to put it on eBay, 
once I get my eBay fees paid for um I'm gonna put it on there for parts but my wife's spice rack show y'all what I'm doing here see I put all these wood chips on the side I wasn't sure if I was wanting to stain them or not and I'm still not all that positively sure like I said I'm winging it so we'll see I'll probably put some down in here too so that won't be an open space I haven't got to the other side yet Ugh. and I was thinking about putting them back here which I probably will put them back there I think I'm not sure I'm not going to put none on there, so I might not put none down here. I don't know, though, because there's a space here that needs to be filled. Yeah, I think I will put them back there, because if I remember right, there's going there's some extra space right here, in between here and there. So I'll fill that space. And I was also thinking about putting them on the inside, which I'm still not sure if I'm going to do or not. So many decisions. Um... Yeah, I might put them on the inside. And where this glue stuff leaked, I don't know. I don't know. We'll worry about that when we get there. Just wanted to show you all the chips I got on it. And all these are just branches that um, I put them on my table saw at that width. And just run them through there. Chip, 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 chip. You know, cutting off the ends every time. And... I did a whole bunch of different sizes so I could fill them in, you know, like that. It'll look a lot better once it's stained. Now that's about all I got going on. Hey that's folks, it. finally finished with the spice rack. Had problems up here where um, I ran out of polyurethane and so I put, I had some lacquer some clear gloss lacquer and I put that on it and man it ate that stuff up like acid I came back out and it was all scrunched up looked like rotten skin or something <laughs> so I had to re-sand that whole top part down and then I used um polyurethane but it wasn't clear gloss it was uh satin but there she is getting ready to go hang her up right now wife is excited. See I put the little wood chips all over everything and polyurethane the heck out of them to fill in the gaps. But that's it. Alright, there it is folks. I like it. Still got room for some more. I thought we'd run out of room. One thing that I wish I would have did though that I didn't do, for one, well two things, make that sign up higher. But um, we needed another shelf for big ones. You know, like these tall spices. You know, these kind here, they won't fit in up here. But I didn't realize we had so many tall ones. You know, we still got... All of them tall ones back there. You know, so it would have been nice if I'd have made it taller, like made it add another two feet to it or one foot to it, and add another shelf or two. Then we could have cleaned out everything out of there. But that's it for now. Still hadn't seen it yet. She's in there. <laughs> All right, we'll get back to you in a bit.